factorizing quadratics. Now, when factorizing quadratics, we're going to start off with our most basic way of factorizing that you should all be able to recall. Um, that one, what is the basic way of factorizing? Remind ourselves, how do we factorize something? What do we look for? Common factor. Don't say put in brackets. Does the word factorize say put in brackets? What does it say? What word does it have in it? Factor. What does that mean? Find the common factor. So I don't want to hear put into brackets because that's not a mathematical explanation. So is there a common factor in this one here? The x squared plus 9x minus 10. Is there something common? Is x common in all of them? No. I know it looks like x is common in this one and that one, but is it common in all of them? So if we want a factor, it has to be common in everything. So you can't take x out as a factor here. Is there a number that's common in all of them? One will go into anything, so one isn't a way of factorizing. One is always a factor of everything you can think of. Okay, so we won't use one because you end up with the same thing. If I take one as, as a factor, what will I end up with? I'll end up with same thing. I'll have one bracket x squared plus 9x minus 10. One will go into anything, so that doesn't really help. So it doesn't actually, I mean, there's no obvious way you're finding a common factor. So, but there is other ways. We'll come on to that. So first thing I want you to do whenever you are factorizing. We will always try and find a common factor. That's the first method I want you to consider. Look for common factor. Don't write anything down. I'll get you. I'll tell you what you need to write down later. I just want you to understand and listen. OK, you don't need a pen here, Rayan. We're just listening. So look for a common factor. So if it doesn't have a common factor, we would then go and look for a second way of doing this. But let's take a look at which one does actually have a common factor. Can you see this expression here? Does this have a common factor? Yeah. X, yeah. I'm going to show you an example here of a common factor. 2x squared plus x. What's the common factor here? So if I was to factorize that out, I would take x out as a common factor. What would I need to times it by? 2x. That will get us back to 2x squared and plus 1. So what do I have here? What have I done with a 2x cut? squared plus x. I factorized it. What are my factors? x and 2x 1 2x plus 1 just x? No. Let's think here. This is where uh, a lot of you have just learned a method for factorizing but you haven't actually understood what factorizing means. So I'm going to take you a little side side note here. This is a little side note, just focusing on something else here. So the side note here, we're going to make a note. So I'll just show you here. I'm going to factorize a number. I'm going to factorize 10. Give me the factors of 10. So I can write it as 5 times 2. Is that the same as saying this 5 and 2 like that? That means times, doesn't it? What are the factors of 10? 5 and 2. So we can say that this here is a factor. And this here is a factor. What do factors do as an operation? They multiply. Factors multiply. If you th think about your basics of factorizing. Right. When you find factors of a number, they are numbers that multiply to give you the original thing. So what are factors by definition? Things that multiply to give you the original thing. So look at this. I factorized it. I found a factor which is x. But what does it multiply with? One. Does it just multiply with one? Look. What does it multiply with? That whole bracket, doesn't it? 2x add one. It multiplies all of that. So what are my factors? x and that whole thing is a factor. What are factors? Things that multiply to give you the original thing. Do 5 and 2 multiply to give us 10? Do x and 2x plus 1 multiply to give us the original thing? Yes. So what we have here, that's one factor and this is another factor. Do you understand? So when I said at the beginning, what are my factors? 
I got a whole range of answers because you weren't sure what factors are when you have algebra. Say that again. Which one? This one, yeah? Okay, yeah. It's not in brackets, yeah? Sometimes they put it in brackets. But what you shouldn't understand is the definition of what factors are. Factors are things that multiply. So if you've got two brackets next to each other, what are, what's the operation between them? Which must mean those two brackets are factors. So let's make a definition of what a factor is algebraically. If two things multiply, then they, those to give you the original, then those two things are considered as factors. So I can write down what factors are. Factors multiply, the key word being multiply, with each other to give you the original expression, to give the original expression. Very important to understand what factorizing is. Now, this is basic factorizing, finding common factor. When did you do this? Year eight, year nine? But did you know that? What did you learn factorizing as? Putting things into brackets? Yeah, yeah. That's not correct, though, is it? It's finding the factors. So when I ask for factorizing again and I ask for explanations, I expect you to give me the correct explanation. Right. So now that we've learnt how to explain factorizing using the simple method, look for common factor, we can go on to look at what happens should we not have a common factor? We can look at. OK, so let's let's take a look at that. We're going to look at the second way of factorizing. Um, I'm going to look at this second way will be um, before we get on to that, th that method, we're going to look at difference of two squares. Look for difference of two squares. And I'll show you what example I mean by that. So what does the word difference of two squares mean? Well, what does the word difference mean? Subtract minus. What's the square? Squares. Apart from shape, what other squares do we know? Square numbers. When I talk about squares, we're talking about square numbers. Do you know why it's called square numbers? Yeah, if you take a, a square which has side three and three and you times them, what's the answer? So nine is a square number. Square numbers are essentially the areas of squares. OK, that's why they're called square numbers. Um, so we've got a square number there. Squares and two means obviously the number two. There must be two squares. There's two square numbers. So let's think of an example of two square numbers. Give me a square number. Nine. Six is not a square number. What square has sides of six? Can you times two things to get an answer of six? No. Two things have to be the same, okay? So nine is a square number. I want you now to give me a algebraic expression involving x's that is a square number. X squared. X squared is a square number. Why? Because how do you get this x squared? What do you times by? What will be the side? X times X will give us X squared. So that area is X squared. Therefore, X squared is a square number. What else could I have had? Could I have 2X and 2X? What does that get you? Oh, so 4X squared is also a square number. I'll write down 4X squared. And what must I have between the two numbers? Uh, subtract, because it says difference. So when you have things like this, a difference of two squares, i.e. two square numbers, we can actually factorize them quite easily. And I'll, uh, first of all, I'll go, you, uh, go through the method, which you can see. It will always form two brackets. But let's form the one bracket first. And you do the square root of uh, 9, which is? You do the square root of 4x squared, which is? 2x. And then you will have the same in the other bracket. 1 is plus and 1 is minus. Now, why is this in a factorized form? Because the two things are? How do you know they're factors? Because they are multiplying each other, so they must be factors. Factor, factor, and the operation is 
times. As we can see, they're next to each other. Therefore, it has been factorized. So that's the second way of factorizing. Why that works, I'll explain later. I'll come back to that. Step three, or the third method of factorizing, if one doesn't work and if two doesn't work, is factorizing um, through AC method, which I'm going to teach you. Have you learned that with Ms. Kinesea? Yeah. We'll go through that. I'll talk about why that is. Yeah, wait for this. We're not making any notes here. It says difference of two squares. Factorizing using AC method. Now let's understand why it's called the AC method. It's because generally all quadratic equations or expressions can be written in this form. AX squared plus BX plus C. Oh, yeah. And the reason why it's called AC method is because we are going to be working with the A and the C and we have to do something with them. We have to multiply them and when you multiply them you get a times c which is ac that's why it's called an ac method because that's the first step that we have to do so let's take a look at an example of factorizing using ac method which is probably the kind of the probably the hardest bit here that's why we reserved that, that till the last thing if one and two don't work we try it using ac method and it will work okay if it doesn't then that means there's no factors it doesn't factorize so how do we factorize using AC method? Well, let me take a look at an example and we'll then take a look at factorizing that using the AC method. Um, hold on a second. So here we need to make sure, let me just check that does factorize yet so we can use that example. Um, a lot of attention here, so just pay attention. Don't worry too much about the making notes. We're gonna look at that later. So the first thing which I'm gonna write down is the example that we're focusing on. So I'm going to write down 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. And we want to factorize this using AC method. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. We're going to highlight the A. And where's my C? What is my C? Is it just 12? Minus 12. I'm going to multiply the A and the C. And when I times them, what do I get? When I times them, what do I get? 2 times minus 12. Minus 24. Yeah, negative 24. You just do 2 times 12, which is 24, and there's a negative there. Okay. Now, what we then look for is, so after you times them, we look for factors of minus 24. 8 and minus 3. We have to think about negatives because we have to make minus 24. So the two things have to multiply to give us minus 24. 8 and 3 work. I could have also done minus 8 and 3, couldn't I? I could use other ones, 6 and minus 4 or minus 6 and 4. You get the idea, there'll be quite a few. But as soon as you found a pair that add up to give us positive 5, we can stop. Is there a pair that add up to give us positive five? Yeah, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to choose my eight and minus three. I've, that is how you pick the correct pair. You don't have to list all the factors. As soon as you found the pair that add up, plus five. Can you see the plus five that I've got? Yeah? So factors of minus four, pick pair that add to give plus five have we picked the pair so now what we go and do is we go and rewrite this expression just pay attention don't worry about making notes you will have this this has been recorded you can look at this in your own time slow time and you can make notes about it after what we do is we're going to rewrite this plus 5x in terms of those two things that we've picked so we're going to write down plus 8x and minus 3x because if you think about it these two actually add up to give us 5x don't they yeah just so you can see what that's going okay and then there's the minus 12 at the end now that you got to this stage we are gonna then just split it in the middle 
and factorize each half separately. So I'm going to factorize. What's the common factor of these two? 2 and x, bracket. And when I factorize the second half, it should give me the same bracket as this. So it should always give me x plus 4. If it doesn't, you've made a mistake with your factorizing. What number do I need here? Minus 3, because that will times that will give you that. Now, think about what you've got here. I've got one here, left-hand side and right-hand side. What's common between the two sides? X plus 4. So that's a common factor. And then I need to times this by 2x and the minus 3 to get my final thing. Now, what do I have here? Because they are timesing each other. So this is now factorized. That's our answer. Okay. So what we've learned here is really focusing on the factorizing. But we should always go down in this order of priority. Look to see if it's common factor. Why? Because that's the easiest. If it doesn't have a common factor, look to see if it's a difference of two squares. Why? Because that's the next easiest thing. If it doesn't work with that and you don't have two square numbers with a minus, you would then look to factorize using the AC method, which will work as long as it's got a factor. And what does this work on the AC method? Only on quadratics.